Hi everyone and welcome to another video about very simple meshes for real-time VFX. In the previous part we've looked into how to make a very simple cylinder with some vertex colors and also plane or grid if you like. In this video I would like to show you how to make those kind of meshes which wraps around this uh, cylinder. Okay, we're also gonna do like a variation of this uh, mesh. We're gonna add a bit more curvy shape to it. So let me just switch to the other one, which is this. And we're gonna have a very simple slider to basically increase the segments on our mesh. As you can see, it kinda, it looks like a spiral. So yeah, this is what we're gonna create in Houdini, another mesh to our collection. Hopefully you'll be saving all those uh, setups and maybe later you'll be able to use it for some different projects uh, that you're gonna make in, uh, in Game Engine. All right, so let's dive into Houdini now. I'm gonna start with a geometry node. I'm going to rename it to um, Spiral uh, Lightning Generator. So normally for the lightning, you probably want to have like a lightning that's going in a straight line from uh, top down, obviously. But uh, for this beam, I actually want this wanted this to be like a, a little bit more three dimensional because I want it this uh, lightning or spiral to wrap around the cylinder rather than being in a straight line. I hope that makes sense. So I'm just going to create uh, this generator in case I'm, I'm going to need it uh, sometime in the future. So obviously I don't have to go and create the mesh from scratch. I already got the generator so I'll have to only tweak a couple parameters in order to get uh, the mesh that I actually uh, need. Right, so I'm gonna dive in and I'm gonna start with spiral. There you go, lab spiral. As in the previous video I mentioned uh, you need to have a side effects labs installed. You can enable it by going into shells and here is the button that actually gonna create this shell for you and here you just have to update the tool set or install it if you have not installed it yet it's gonna require houdini restart uh, but once this done you got the the same tools i actually have and also for my workspace i use games uh, here so feel free to change it to whatever you prefer right so we've got the spiral now i'm just gonna press space and f on my keyboard in order to zoom in and that's what we've got. Uh, I've got those points enabled. And to see the points, you can just click this button. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna add one to height. And maybe for the loops, I'm gonna increase it to maybe two for now. As for the radius, I'm gonna do maybe 0.3 and 0.3 as well. So it's not tapered. If you would like this to be tapered, maybe lower this to something like 0.1 and it's gonna start very wide and goes into the center. As for now, I'm just gonna create a spiral of this mesh to be um, roughly the same size. Okay, I'm just gonna decrease the amount of points, maybe to 50 as we don't need much. Uh, next, because I'm creating this for my beam, I'm actually going to rotate this. So what I'm going to do, I can either, no, actually no, I thought we can do it in here. But this seems to be actually rotating the mesh on the other axis. So what we could do, we could just add simple transform. And in this transform, we can rotate it. And also, as you can see here, we've got the axis so I want this to be pointing that way so 
So in my case, it will be minus 90 on uh, Z axis. Okay, we've got this. I think I just wanna uh, shrink it down a little bit. So I'm gonna put 0.1 and 0.1 and I essentially get something like this. Maybe I don't need that much loop, so maybe I'm gonna end up with one loop for now. And then I can add some more loops if I really need later on. Now I'm gonna resample. And what it's gonna do is just gonna create the amount of points on that spline that I actually want. So maybe you can have five, 10 or even 50. And this parameter essentially will be driving our amount of those points creating this uh, either like a lightning shape or a bit more soft and curvy okay so for now i'm just gonna keep it at 20. right and the next node i'm gonna use it's the curve sweep and it's actually another node from side effects uh, labs so i'm gonna have this Obviously, it's very broken now, so I'm going to use a line as a mesh type. I'm going to reduce the uh, division maybe to one or two. And I'm going to change the up vector of it to one. A uniform scale, I'm probably going to reduce it to something like 0.1. As you can see, we're getting this uh, mesh sweep around our um, sorry, on our curve. You can, you can also have this uh, ramp here. So you can tweak it if you want. As you can see it kind of alters our uh, sweep mesh. So it's uh, up to you if you need that kind of visuals. I'm just going to get rid of it now and keep it, uh, keep the value set to one. Uh, very often I create like a cross section of those uh, meshes because uh, if it's going to be visible from various angles like this one, you're going to have like a hard edge and part of this, like this bit might be invisible in the engine and you might have like a break in your visuals. So I like to create a cross section of, uh, of this. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this curve sweep, paste it next to it and I'm going to merge those two. Okay, to actually preview what I'm doing, I'm going to select one of the curve sweeps, set this to zero, and that usually does the job. As you can see, we're kind of getting this cross section, but often I like to change the values manually. So I'm going to set this to one. And it seems like it's working. The only issue is now I've got the uniform scale in two, uh, two places. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, maybe from the first one, I'm, I'm going to actually click on uniform, right click, uh, copy parameter, I'm going to go to the second one, right click, and paste relative reference. And now if I go here and change this one value, it actually changes in the, in the both nodes. Okay, the issue with this I notice is that if you're going to go with the crazy scale, it starts to create uh, the meshes or points that you actually don't want and don't need. So I'm, I'm trying to keep it fairly small, something like this. Another problem I used to have with this was the uh, different orientation on one of those planes. So very often I just go and align the values manually like this. If I want mm, this to be oriented in a specific way. But most of the time, this does the job. Uh, we can also preview the UVs. As you can see, those are actually uh, right here. So what I'm going to do next, I'm, I'm going to create UV transform. And I'm going to use the same trick I used in the previous video. So in scale, I'm just going to type uh, one slash size X. I'm going to copy this and paste it 
into the Y input as well, but with Y at the end. It does nothing because I forgot to add a dollar sign before S. So that's what I'm going to do next. Add the dollar sign and here as well. And as you can see, it distributes our UVs into the um, UV space. So from zero to one, basically. Okay, so now I've got the UVs. I'm just going to go to perspective view. And the last thing I want to add is the vertex color. So labs or actually color and I'm gonna use a labs color gradient node I'm gonna enable it uh, the axis I want to use is actually X and I want the vertex color to be black here and at the end so I'm gonna change this to black and in here I'm gonna add 0.15 maybe change it to white and another one you just click anywhere another one would be at 0.85 and it will be white as well okay so feel free to tweak this ramp uh, for your needs i probably want to move this maybe to 0.3 and this one to 0.7 so the transition is a little bit more softer All right so why do i need vertex color so let's say I've got a texture that is spanning across this uh, mesh and I don't want like a very harsh or hard transition here. So I want this to appear very softly in terms of uh, translucency or opacity. And I want to disappear here, have like a soft transition into nothing as well. That's why I use this. Normally I probably use like a texture but to avoid using textures, I'm just gonna use the vertex data for that mesh. Okay, so now as you can see, this is very soft. So what we can do, we can go to resample node and tweak the segments to maybe something like four. And we could get something that looks uh, more like a lightning mesh. And obviously we can go back to spiral and we could add, for example, two loops or three loops, change the height and the radius of it as well. And the last thing I like to add is the transform. And this last transform is usually to set the scale for the game engine. So I'm going to call it game engine scale. And here I'm just adding 50 into uniform scale. So this appears uh, in the engine correctly. And the last thing, as you can see, it's kind of offset it uh, on the X axis. So before I actually plug this into the transform that adjusts the scale, I'm going to type uh, labs align axis plug it in between and in here I'm actually gonna set the center to all three of those and it's actually adjust its pivot point now and now if I want this to be a lot more softer I'm just gonna add segments go to spiral and change its loop maybe to one or two I could adjust the uh, the height of it as well and the radius if I want a little bit different mesh I'm just gonna tweak this rotation parameter and as you can see we get like a really nice generator uh, for our um, lightning or kind of like very curvy sweep mesh the best thing about this is you can go to the curve sweep, for example, and adjust the ramp here. So, for example, I'm just going to add another point here in the middle. I'm going to take uh, the start point and the end point to maybe point 0.1. And I've got this nice taper effect now. I have to recreate this in, um, in the other uh, curve sweep as well so I'm gonna do the same 
set this to 0.5, value of 1, and this one, 0.1, and 0.1 here as well. As you can see, it creates really nice tapered effect. And again, you can go back to loops, adjust it, and you're gonna end up having the UVs, the vertex color, and everything else in this procedural system. Right, so I hope this helps. Uh, and I hope you're gonna like this video so we can explore uh, various different meshes in Houdini for real-time uh, VFX. All right, thank you so much for watching.